So much going on in the world. You talk about things from the perspective of how it is. DJ Diamond K, sometimes it comes off like you are almost not in support of, but you just accept the way things are and there's no chance of change. Check me out on YouTube. That's the part that I am just like, ah. On FireTV.com. What's going on? What's going on? It's your man Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com, on fire-tv.com. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. A lot of things I got to get into today. Of course, here on the show, we deliver the biggest political and trending news stories of the day with uh, original reporting and interviews, con talking about content from across the country. So I'm, I'm going to go into a lot of different things course uh episodes drop uh weekdays 6 p.m we are here a little bit later today because there's so much going on so much going on also had to go to a viewing uh and so um you know life is short right life is short uh thankfully uh the lady who passed lived a long life but of course you know it is it's never never enough time never enough time so uh, that's why I uh, was running late today. But uh, you know, those that are checking us out on demand, this is not even a uh, not even a story, right? Uh, does not even a story. Um, so uh, definitely shout out to um, the Baltimore Crown Awards. We have talked about them for the last few months, and uh, thank you to everyone who nominated uh, the Diamond K Show in the uh, Podcast of the Year category. Of course, you can visit the Baltimore Scene.org, the Baltimore Scene.org uh, to cast your votes for the Baltimore Crown Awards. So, um, as I said, a lot of things that we have to uh, get into. Speaker Pelosi, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the uh, era for her is over. Her as the uh, Speaker of the House, over. She is. Uh, she is um she's up in age, of course. <laughs> uh she shattered what they call the marble ceiling. She shattered that. Uh she did her thing and uh she's she's had a hell of a run. Uh a lot of uh folks on the right, the political right, they they just paint her as the boogie woman, boogie man, boogie woman. They paint her as uh an enemy. And, uh, but she's put in a lot of work. She's put in a lot of work, of course. She's a Baltimore girl. So, you know, that alone, I mean, I got to root for that alone. Uh, but she announced today that she's going to step down from Democratic Party leadership. She says that with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek reelection to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hour has come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect, she said. I am grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility, she said on uh, the House floor today. Pelosi said that she will continue to represent uh, her San Francisco district in the House. And in her remarks, Pelosi warned that democracy is majestic, but it is also fragile. She said that voters in 2022 sent a message to Congress that they would not support those who supported violence or insurrection. She applauded the chamber for becoming more diverse over the course of her 35 years year career 35 years nancy pelosi been uh putting in that work she first entered congress in 1987 back then there were just 12 women in the democratic caucus 
Now there are 90. Now there are 90. Her decision comes a day after Republicans officially won control of the House in the 2022 midterms and three weeks after the violent assault on her husband in their San Francisco home. Now, uh, yeah, I mean, her her decision really not a surprise to uh, folks on Capitol Hill, and it is consistent with the promise that she made four years ago to uh, self-term limit. She said that after uh, Democrats won the majority in 2018 and she became the first speaker since the legendary Sam Rayburn to claim speakership twice. So, um, you know, there, there's really been a, a desire amongst many Democrats to elect a younger slate of leaders, the next generation. Pelosi is 82 years old. She's 82. And uh, two other top House Democratic leaders, Hoyer, a uh, Democrat uh, from Maryland, and Clyburn, Democrat from South Carolina, all are in their 80s. So it's it's been a uh, a great run. But uh, in the words of uh, the Chappelle show, it's time to wrap this thing up, B. <laughs> right? It's, it's definitely time. Uh, for them to, uh, you know, enjoy the uh, golden, the golden uh, stage of their life, golden stage. We'll uh, continue this conversation after this. So, Mayor Brandon Scott, Baltimore's Mayor Brandon Scott, announced changes in leadership within the city's law department. With the retirement of the city solicitor, Jim Shea, effective January 2023, the deputy solicitor, Ebony Thompson, will assume the lead role. Uh, Scott administration made this announcement today. So after that retirement, which is, which is effective January the 13th, 2023, the current deputy solicitor, Ebony Thomas, Thompson, excuse me, Ebony Thompson Esquire will become the new city solicitor. All right, so that is, uh, you know, it's elevation. It's an elevation. So, you know, he put in work, right? Practiced law for more than 40 years. Did a lot of uh, big things. Now, Thompson, she has... Uh, in this period of time that, that Scott has been in office, she has proved herself to be a very important member of Brandon Scott's administration. She has advanced his uh, agenda in the Maryland General Assembly, negotiated and presented some high-profile settlements for approval before the Board of Estimates. She's advocated for the city in the consent decree hearings. She has assisted in uh, a lot of different things and worked within 12 different practice groups. So uh, she joined the solicitor's office in uh, January of 2022, worked aggressively on Mayor Scott's call to tackle vacant housing. She collaborated with Councilwoman Ramos, the Department of Housing and Community Development, the chief judge carry on to establish a new track for Baltimore City uh, with regards to the uh, tax foreclosures. She did a lot you know, in a little bit of time. Um, so uh, so she's really getting ready to step up with uh, with regards to things. And um, and I just named a few of the things. So she you know worked with uh, land titles and valuation, permit tracking. A, uh, a whole host of things. So following the departure of former chief of staff, Michael Huber, in September, Thompson assumed the role of interim chief of staff and simultaneously held that role while carrying out her duties as deputy solicitor. So 
So in this dual capacity, she has developed internal and external relationships. Uh, as you can see, the Scott administration is very excited about uh, this step. Excited to see her continue to lead in this new role. And I look forward to her contributions in uh, watching what she does next. Definitely need a, uh, a strong attorney, several strong attorneys, uh, to make an administration effective. And um, that is what they have. So um, prior to coming to City Hall, she was uh, an associate and counsel at uh, Maryland's largest law firm venable llp so uh she was there from 2013 to 2022 she is a baltimore city native proud graduate of baltimore city college you know baltimore, you know the high school right and uh so yeah so she's uh she's doing her thing she was also a private real estate investor that's interesting so uh, shout out to her, salute to her, and, uh, and, and all that. Let's do this. Take a quick break, and we'll be back with more after this. So this case has just, I don't know, it's just been one of those things. Today, a uh, Baltimore judge ruled on the squeegee a squeegee kid that has been accused of murder, the plea deal in that case. We've talked about that. I mean, since it happened, we've, we've talked about this case since it's happened. Uh, but today was, uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, they were trying to send this teenager to the juvenile system. And of course the family wants it in the adult system. They want the uh, worst possible outcome uh, for this young man because they lost their loved one. So um, it, it's I, I think it, it's the wrong decision, right? But today, outside of the Baltimore City Juvenile Justice Center, it has been confirmed that um, the teenage squeegee kid accused of shooting Timothy Reynolds on July 7th in downtown Baltimore. Uh, we initially thought that this case was going to go to juvenile court, and he agreed to plead guilty to manslaughter. The family, the Reynolds family, objected to this approach, and they went on this uh, public tour to uh, let us know that. Uh, so there were some photos that were released by the family on Tuesday, and they claimed that the shooting was intentional and not committed in self-defense. Uh, it's interesting that uh, they're taking this approach. This morning, the uh, hearing happened. So this morning, hearing happens, and... Um, I don't, I don't know. It, it's the thing about the juvenile system versus the adult system. Um, the juvenile system is really, it is really rooted in rehabilitation. The adult system is not set up like that. And uh, it, it is just, um, it, it's a major hurdle. It, it's a major hurdle. Both sides the uh, Reynolds family and supporters of the squeegee kid said that the judge watched the CCTV video and some dash cam video of this shooting. He also heard from the victim's family and mental health experts supporting the defendant's claim to move to the juvenile system. I mean, aside from the fact that he is a juvenile, uh, but given the severity of this crime, that is not what's going to happen. So uh, Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby issued a statement 
on this ruling, saying that today's decision by the court could not have been an easy one to make, but it was done in the best interest of justice and fairness. She said, as I've stated before, there are no winners in this case. A man lost his life and a child will have to face consequences because of his inexcusable and reckless actions. So uh, the teen is going to be tried as an adult. No court date has been set as of yet. And it is also unclear whether the defendant will be transferred out of Baltimore City's um, Juvenile Justice Center to somewhere else. That is uh, unknown right now. I mean, this is this is just a uh, it's a tough case. It is, it is a tough case. And when it goes to trial, when this case goes to trial, it is one that I believe is going to really, really light this city up. You know, it, it is it is going to be one of those cases that that causes a lot of um, attention in the city. You're going to have a a, uh, a black 15-year-old kid accused of killing a white guy, shooting him, squeegee worker. Yeah, this is this is going to be this is going to happen in 2023 more than likely. And this is this is going to be uh this is going to be something else. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. Do you think that this case should be in the adult system? Or is this something that should be in the juvenile system? I definitely want to know folks' thoughts on that. Uh, before we get out of here, let's take a quick break and we'll come back with uh, our last story before the No Filter podcast. So Republicans have won back, I guess, some measure of, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, the red wave didn't happen, right? Uh, but they have won control over the House. And uh, I mean, it's such a low bar, <laughs> such a low bar. Uh, but they are returning to power in D.C. and giving conservatives some leverage to uh, really obstruct President Biden's agenda. There are going to be a whole bunch of investigations. And this slim majority is definitely going to pose some challenges for GOP leaders. It's definitely going to complicate things and make it hard to govern. But that's not their goal anyway. Their goal is not to govern. They want to obstruct. They want to just slow things down. Now, more than a week after Election Day, Republicans secured the 218th seat needed to flip the House from Democratic control. The full scope of the party's majority may not be clear for several more days. There are still... Votes being counted in some competitive races. They definitely need to get, change some laws, get this thing together. It should not take this long to count a little bit of votes. And when I say a little bit, I do mean, you know, thousands and thousands of votes. This uh, is far from a sweeping victory. The GOP predicted anyone that they're going to try to tell you something otherwise, right? I heard Ben Shapiro saying, oh, no, no, the polls were right. This is what we were predicting. No, this is not what you're predicting. Uh, ben Shapiro said that it was going to be a slaughter. It was going to be, you know, a red massacre. Oh, you know, I mean, and that's not what happened. Not what happened. The Democrats showed resilience. The Democrats held on to a very, very moderate, very, uh, 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 I mean, here's the thing. It is history setting because 
based on what we've seen, the Republicans were just supposed to wipe the, the board. Take everything. That's not what happened. It's not what happened at all. So uh, the results could complicate GOP leader Kevin McCarthy's plans to become speaker. Oh, he wants to be speaker so bad. Oh, he wants to be speaker so bad. I think he would sell one of his kids to be speaker. And he may get the chance, but it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be what you thought it was going to be. It's not going to be all that it was cracked up for, what you've been hoping and praying for. Not going to be that. Mitch McConnell reelected to uh, Senate GOP. Says he's not going anywhere. So uh, he had a challenge from Rick Scott of Florida. I mean, you know, Rick Scott, I guess he was feeling himself because DeSantis and and uh, other Florida folks had it such a, uh, a, I don't know, a big victory. So Rick Scott was feeling himself, you know. But uh, the performance for Republicans in the midterms, which kept Senate control at the hands of the Democrats, y'all were disappointed, Republicans. McConnell is of Kentucky. And he easily squashed the challenge from Scott in the first ever attempt to oust him after many years as a GOP leader. Hopefully they get him out of here eventually. The vote was 37 to 10. So 10 senators was like, nah, let's get him, let, let, let's get him back, you know, to Kentucky somewhere. Not in the leadership. But uh, you know. McConnell is poised to become the Senate's longest serving leader when the new Congress convenes next year. I'm not going anywhere, he said. I don't want to go spend no extra time at home with my wife. <laughs> but there was a, uh, a four hour closed door meeting, said that he is pretty proud of the outcome, but acknowledged that there is work ahead. Oh, there's a lot of work ahead. He thinks that everybody in the conference agrees. We want to give our it our best shot. The best shot that they want to do is complicate things for the country, tie things up, obstruct. He was a pain in the, the side of President Obama. And it, this guy is slick and slippery, McConnell. Slick and slippery. He could have neutralized this Trump uh, problem that the, the, the country has. But for whatever reason... When Trump is down and out, McConnell just won't step on the bug, the MAGA bug. He just won't step on and crush the MAGA bug. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why. I don't know why. But he won't do it. He needs to do it. Crush the bug. Last thing before we get out of here. <laughs> Carrie Lake. Oh, she's so pitiful. She refuses to concede in Arizona. She's already lost the race. Another Trump Republican who is just a loser refuses to take her L. She's trying to get together lawyers. She's collecting evidence. She's, she's trying to say people had trouble casting ballots. What are you talking about? She's considering her next move. She thought she was going to be Trump's running mate. One loser next to another loser. She put uh, this I don't know, two and a half minute video out, made no mention of giving up in uh, her most extensive public comments since she lost the election. Oh, she lost. I mean, you know, somebody got to win and somebody got to lose. Now, before the election, she refused to say that she would concede if she lost to Katie Hobbs. And things are going to still go on whether she concedes or not. Oh, but she lost. Now, she said this. Rest assured, I have assembled the best and the brightest legal team. And we are exploring every option to correct the many wrongs that have been done this past week. And she's going to try to have a recount. Like, a couple hundred votes, a recount might can fix that. She's down by, I don't know, over 21,000 votes. Come on, Carrie Lake. 
Just get that resume together. <laughs> County uh, election officials said that all ballots were counted and that voters could go to any polling place in the county, many of which had little to no line with wait times posted online. So she is just, she's trying. Nobody's buying. Uh, Carrie Lake is lying. California governor, the wife of the California governor, testified that Harvey Weinstein raped her. Jennifer Newsom, she's a filmmaker and the wife of Gavin Newsom, took the stand in Harvey Weinstein's sexual assault trial in Los Angeles earlier this week. And at times she broke down into tears, alleging that he raped her in a hotel room in 2005. Weinstein has pleaded not guilty to multiple sexual assault charges, including four counts of rape, four counts of forcible uh, oral uh, sexual penetration by force and sexual battery by restraint, including incidents dating from 2004 to 2013. This guy is the scum of the earth. Scum, scum, scum. You need to put him under the jail. Uh, she's the fourth accuser to testify and said that she was a little nervous and grew uh, emotional shortly after taking the stand. Uh, it is, it is, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, the fact that Hollywood allowed this guy to just roam around hurting people, raping people is disgusting. He's not the only person that should be in trouble for this, on the hook for this. There were a lot of people that sat by idly and did nothing. <music> Lastly, uh, the AG seeks to release a report into child sex abuse in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Maryland's Attorney General today filed a motion to release an investigative report of child sex abuse. Now, that the Archdiocese of Baltimore, Attorney General uh, Brian Frosch released a statement today, this afternoon, saying that his office is seeking approval from Baltimore City Circuit Court to release the 463-page report to the public the release must be approved by the court because the documents were handed over in response to uh, grand jury subpoenas. For decades, decades, survivors reported sexual abuse perpetrated by Catholic priests. And for decades, the church covered up the abuse rather than holding the abusers accountable and protecting its congregations. We're going after Weinstein. Y'all went after Cosby. You went after R. Kelly and many others. The Catholic Church also needs to be held accountable. Now, in this motion, the Attorney General stated the investigation identified more than 600 victims. 600. And there's almost certainly hundreds more. The motion states that the archdiocese failed to take action or report the sexual abuse. That's called a cover-up. The motion also seeks to disclose information about priests or church officials who were prosecuted for sexual misconduct, publicly identified by the archdiocese as having been credibly accused of sexual misconduct, not publicly identified by the archdiocese as having been credibly, uh, credibly accused of sexual misconduct, not publicly identified by the archdiocese as having been credibly accused and are still living. So uh, there, there have been hundreds of thousands of documents dating back to the 1940s in response to the subpoenas Attorney General sought information about child sexual abuse 
uh, from the public. And that could be submitted by email or by phone, 410-576-6312. 410-576-6312. Uh, Fire TV has reached out to the Archdiocese of Baltimore for a comment. There have not been uh, any responses as of yet. So, I don't know. It's one of those things. I'll, um, but we'll be back here tomorrow, of course, 6 p.m., the Diamond K Show, onfire-tv.com, onfire-tv.com. <laughs>